<laughs> Viva la vegan! Hello, I'm Lee Chantel from Viva la Vegan, and I'd like to welcome Jordan Halliday and Jeremy Parkin, and they're from the Witch Side Podcast, which you can find at witchsidepodcast.com. How are you both? Good, well. well. That's good. And we've just actually had another um, podcast. I've been interviewed for your podcast. When will that be live? Should be not this Sunday, but the next. Okay, cool. Look forward to it. And it's um, 8.30 a.m. on a Sunday, my time in Brisbane, Australia. And it's about, what, 3.30 Saturday in Utah? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And um, so this is the first of hopefully many of my podcasts, um, getting back into podcasts this year, guys. And um, I thought I would interview you and find out some of your tricks of the trade with your podcasts. Okay. So when did you start your podcast? It would have been November of October, 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 somewhere around there. Of when? Of 12, 2012. Yeah. Okay. Holy crap. So that's a while. Mm -hmm. And how often do you do the podcasts? It's once a week. Once a week. And do you do them all at once or like, you know, say you do four one day a month or do you do them each week? We, we try to do them each week. Sometimes we'll double stack them to get a, a back catalog um, in case, you know, we're busy on the weekend or have other things going on where we can't record. Mm-hmm. And how long do you normally aim for with the podcasts? Uh, an hour is usually our minimum. Mm-hmm. And do you go over much? Um, every once in a while, like if we're in a, a, a deep conversation, we'll go over, but usually we try to stick it to that hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so a lot of podcast people say keep to about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. What do you think about that? I think, I think it works for some podcasts. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm fine sometimes with podcasts going as long as four hours. Um, oh, wow. if it, if it's engaging enough, then yeah. I think it's definitely... What are those podcasts yeah. that go for four hours? Oh, there's a lot of great, like, history podcasts. There's a lot oh. of great in-depth interview podcasts. Um, what I like is that we try to be more conversational. Yeah. And it gives you a lot more runway to um, go down the interview and, and go down more avenues than just, you know, almost sound bites. So you can get a lot more accomplished in that hour time frame. Definitely. I enjoyed our podcast before anyway. <laughs> yeah. And um, why did you start the podcast? <laughs> um, well, there's there's a lot of great like vegan podcasts out there and everything, but um, it seemed like a lot of it was all about veganism. We wanted to have like mm -hmm. a slightly different, more relaxed side to activism, veganism, um, and anarchism, and just have that more of a relaxed feel where it's not just the the preaching to the choir, but more like just hanging out with your friends. Mm. Yeah, it was very good, very casual sort of feel the podcast. And is that what you're trying to get? Like the more just relaxed, um, friends, sort of talking to friends type thing? Definitely. Yeah, it's mm. it's like um, like if you just met somebody for the first time and you're hanging out and just trying to get to know them. Yeah, that's cool. And so what are your favourite vegan podcasts? Other ones than yours? Do you listen Go to them? <laughs> Go first. <laughs> um, I, honestly, this is going to sound really bad. I try not to listen to them because... <laughs> Um, it, it seems like I don't want to either be stealing ideas mm. or being influenced too much by one way or the other. Mm. Um, so I, I really just try to, to, to keep to myself. I do listen to a lot of podcasts, but I, I kind of purposely stay away from the vegan ones. Mm. Yeah, the, I, I do the same too. Like um, I probably – I don't really listen to many podcasts for one, but I do – I'm um, a big fan of Australian Football League, so our own football. So I listen to the AFL podcasts, but that's about it. <laughs> and what um, topics do you speak of on your podcast? On, oh, man. on our podcast? It, it ranges from every guest. Um, usually we try to find guests in radical circles, um, anarchism, veganism, um, activism in general, environmental activism, or animal activism. Um, and then with those, we just let the conversation flow. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, sometimes it's really serious, and sometimes it's just joking. Um, one, that, one that comes to mind is we had uh, Honey LeBronx um, from oh, the Big Fat Radio on. Yeah. And uh, 
she decided to do some very interesting things live on show. So, <laughs> so check that one out if you want to go down a road that not many people would want to go down. Hmm, <laughs> intriguing. <laughs> Jordan, I cut you off with your um, favorite podcast or what podcast you listen to. Oh, um, I like I like history podcasts. I like. Mm-hmm. Um, useless information podcasts <laughs> stuff like that that just that distracts my time yep. more or less that I can listen to while working or something like that mm-hmm. I guess you know I when I'm working or when I'm doing something I really don't like any distraction whatsoever so I'm pretty much silent most of the time when I when I work do you find you work better or or not so when you have distractions or sound I think I think if I'm doing programming then i want it to be silent but if i'm doing like graphic design then i i don't mind background noise actually one of my friends she um adele walker she has um a a website bambi wants revenge and um she does all my design stuff and she always works with music so whenever we're working together it's always music but i've just been reading this book about the the Mozart effect all about music and how like if if you're doing something creative like the um graphic design stuff you're when you're listening to music or something else that's creative it inspires your own creativity you know um, a lot of industrial designers um are required to listen to music i know nike requires their their industrial designers to listen to music really they're not allowed to listen to jazz music ironically enough Hmm. Um, because they say jazz music in in that setting inhibits them a little bit. Yeah, there's yeah. This book, I'm only just sort of starting it, but it, yeah, it's talking about different styles and what you know. Um, Mozart obviously is the best sort of one, and some of his piano sonata, sonata or I can't remember now, but um, they're specifically for study or to to do some really good work. Have you, Have you ever listened to Mozart with their his tempo? with his, his own tempo markings. No, I don't think so. It's insane. A lot of people think he was crazy with his tempo markings because it should be anywhere from two to five times faster yeah. in a lot of parts. So it's pretty interesting if you ever want to Like, Google. so it's sped up. Mozart sped Way up. Way sped up. Like, <laughs> to the point that, like, it makes the musicians make mistakes. And oh, that's wow. that's kind of, like, what a lot of people theorize he was going for. Wow, okay. That's interesting. And um, so um, if you go back to the topics we were speaking about before, what are your favorite things to speak to people about on your podcast? I love origin stories. I love um, what brought people to their activism, what brought people to veganism or anarchism. Um, I just, I love the, the, the origin stories. Mm. Definitely. I like, I like uh, absurd police interactions. <laughs> 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 if there are um, I also like to know how people decompress when when they have a lot of when they're doing a lot of things so that's interesting mm. as well how do you both decompress then um, honestly this podcast is a decompression for me mm. I, I could say that too I think um, definitely this and um, just watching watching movies or playing video games <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. What about Guitar Hero? I like Guitar Hero. I for, for a while you yeah, were both really into yeah. that. That um, was massive for years ago, wasn't it? And then it sort of yeah, died. It just died. <laughs> yeah. It didn't really just die. It did just die out. Yeah, I, I liked it. For sure. Yeah, it was great. Some of my friends and I, that's what we all we used to do for months on end. It was a lot of fun. Really good at it. <laughs> I almost beat the whole thing on expert, but I didn't quite get through the um, the last level on expert. I kind of gave up and just was like, no. When it was first out, actually, I was working at this. Um, I was in a music store, and um, we had videos and everything as well and I was at a store around Christmas demoing the Guitar Hero for people, and um, I remember I. I woke the person I was up with by playing on his hand with my fingers as though I was playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> He's like, you play Guitar Hero too much. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, that's probably not good. <laughs> so can you tell me both about why you first went vegan? Um, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I went vegetarian at the age of 11, um, just it started out with just the, the realization of where meat really comes from, that it's really an animal. 
and uh, and it expanded from there. Um, when I went vegetarian at first, um, my parents made me promise them that I wouldn't go vegan, <laughs> which then introduced me to what the term vegan was. <laughs> and I had to research that, and um, and when I finally did become vegan, I was afraid to tell my parents because I went against their one promise that they were going to be okay with. So I was mm-hmm. vegan for about three months before my parents actually realized it. They're just one day my mom was like, you haven't eaten cheese ravioli in like three months. What the hell is going on? I'm like, I'm vegan. And it was, it was a little blowout, but yeah. How old were you then when you were vegan? 13. Yeah. 13. I definitely think, because I was young too when I first made that connection, so I do think kids get the connection more than adults do. And so your mum's okay with it now? <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's actually been, you know, um, going through high school and everything. She actually became one of my biggest supporters um, uh, through high school and, and being an activist and then going, you know, through what a lot of activists go through. And um, after her house was raided by the FBI, she actually became like my, my staunch supporter. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. And what about you, Jordan? Um, I was in some off-track program when I was a kid. What's an off-track um, program? So they have, in our school systems here, some of them have these track programs. And while some kids are in school, other kids are out of school. Mm-hmm. And Like so, homeschooling or? No, it, it's just. It's they, so they can cram more classes. It's so that they can fit more kids into a school. They, they oh. Some kids will have a certain amount of period, off, like a certain time off while other kids are in the school. And so. Like the time, different times, like some kids mm-hmm. go to school in the morning, some at afternoon. No, so like um, there's like usually four tracks, and one track will always be off at a time. And mm-hmm. so every twelve weeks, one track will be off for three weeks, oh. and then it rotates who's there. So every would that be every twelve weeks? I think yeah. they rotate. Yeah. So you would be like track two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And uh, and um, so I was out of school at this period, and so there was a local farm here called Wheeler Farm, mm-hmm. and they had this this off track program for kids that were out of school Mm -hmm. because parents still have to go to work. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually the only person that signed up for that week. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time they did it. And during that time, a cow had given birth to a calf and they named it after me. And so that kind of, that was the initial seed, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. But um, about... Two years later, or during that time, I, I visited periodically, and one of the times that I visited, um, the cow wasn't not, wasn't there any longer, mm-hmm. and I was kind of freaking out. I'm like, well, what happened to Jordan, and no one was telling me, and they told my parents that they sold it to a bee dealer who either um, sold it to the rodeo or or maybe went for a veal. I think it was mm-hmm. more rodeo, knowing what I know about veal now, but... Mm-hmm. Um, so soon after that, we were having steak for dinner, and I think my family jokingly said something like that we could be eating Jordan. Aww. And so that kind of was where the connection clicked. Yeah. And so I pushed, I pushed my plate away, and I and I didn't eat meat since that. Mm-hmm. And that's when I went vegetarian, and then it was just a couple, couple years after that that I like learned about veganism and went vegan. Mm-hmm. So yeah, good. It's good yeah. to be part of the the flock, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe not so much the scene sometimes, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can you tell me about the process of um, podcasting and what you do? Like, um, what what do you use? What programs do you edit? Do you just do it all straight out? All that sort of stuff. Um, well, we started out using GarageBand on a Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, and just we actually started using just the internal mic on an iMac, mm. um, which listening to it now, it, it's not the greatest quality, mm. but it's it's passable and you can do it. Um, and then through uh, donations that we got from our listeners, we upgraded to a, a USB Snowball Blue Snowball mic, which we're using, which right we're now. using right now. Is and that a Snowball? Got, is that a condenser mic or? You know, honestly, I don't know too much about it. It's a I know it has three different directions. Um, Oh, so, wow, okay. Um, trying to show it to you, yeah. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Like the props. Um, <laughs> and then from there, we actually got more donations where we actually upgraded to 
the Samsung CO1U condenser microphones, uh, USB okay. microphones that we, we use um, for the show now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he'll show that to you. I can. You can show yeah. yours. Yeah. So here. Whoa. There it is. Okay, so, cool. And we made these Nifty Pop filters ourselves. Uh, oh, you did? As Good. Much money as we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you make them? Uh, so it's a knitting yarn knitting thing that holds like cross stitches in place. Huh. And then just put um, nylon around that and then hooked it to discarded electrical wire and that's what holds it. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> saves us about 20, 40 bucks. Yeah, it saves yeah. us quite a bit of money by, by, yeah. by hand making them. And then um, we now record on Logic Pro directly, um, which is part of the, the Apple professional recording suite. Mm -hmm. So um, I've just got, oh, what's it called? Um, call Recorder. So mm -hmm. my friend Jasmine Singer from Our Hen House, she uses this. And it's amazing because you can record, like what I'm doing now, I'm recording the audio and the visual. Yeah. Do you do both visual and audio or just audio? Right now we're just audio. Mm -hmm. And so the Logic Pro that you use, does that also mm -hmm. do video? Um, the, the, it's in combination with another program, which would be Final Cut, oh, which, yeah. would, uh, which you would record the video in Final Cut with uh, the audio being recorded in Logic Pro, mm -hmm. if we were going to do it, yeah. And would you think about that in the future or it's just too much work? We've thought about it, and we, we have a bunch of plans, but it's it's a lot of work. Like mm. Putting these out every week, it's a ton, way more work than we ever thought. Um, it is, isn't it? we first decided to do weekly, I don't, we had no idea how much it was going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you record, like say we just did our podcast today, and that was like, what, an hour, ten minutes. Um, do you do much editing to that? As, as little Very as possible. Little. Yeah. So do you add like an intro or an outro or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we add usually anywhere from uh, a two to five minute intro, mm -hmm. um, which we'll talk about uh, events that are happening across the nation that either people are looking that they want to promote or just things that we find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and we introduce the guest that way. And then we also do an outro, which we'll uh, talk about any sponsors. And then, you know, we have our theme song that we throw in there as yeah, well. Yeah, our theme songs. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I've just got a theme song now that I did at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a little theme song, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. And so, um, like, with the editing, you just record that with Logic Pro with the outro and the intro? Mm -hmm. And just put it together? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah. Just it's, splice it in. You, you, just, you just splice it in, and then we'll drop in our music bed. Um, and that'll be uh, a little... A little music on the over us or under us I should say on the intro and outro mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and do you, um, where do you get that music from uh, right now what we do is we uh, scour uh, free use sites where it, it licenses free music mm -hmm. and we'll find music that, that we find that will best fit um, sometimes we'll, we'll just go find you know vegan anarchist bands and, and throw some stuff on there but, and do you have the music through the whole way or just parts just do the intro and outro. Yeah, okay, music. cool. Yeah, that's one thing you you hear with some people that do podcasts or even videos and interviews and stuff like that. They have music throughout. And for me, I detest editing. It's one of those things that I just can't handle too much. So, yeah, I would just do one takes for everything, even my videos. It's just one take, quick. <laughs> and you might, if you stuff up something or, you know, you just, like, take that little bit out. But... I, that's pretty much all I would do. And I love this this new toy that I've got now, this um, call recorder, because I just did a, a quick demo with my mum yesterday and it just can split into video and audio. Like, you don't have to do anything. And then it just converts it into, like, um, uh, MP3 or um, the audio. What's the AAC or something? So it seems pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, sorry? I was going to say, we've, we've definitely um, looked into doing some video stuff. Um, we want to expand our collective. Um, we have talks of podcasts coming out of India right now mm -hmm. and some cool. other places that will join our, our podcast collective. Um, and so we've talked about video. We have ideas, mm -hmm. but haven't, haven't done anything with it yet. Yeah. 
I think also like for me this year because um you know a lot of people I've just been really stuck with what to do with podcasts so the videos that I do like I do a um uh, regular question and answer series on on YouTube every Tuesday so I just detach the audio from that or or create or the audio goes into an MP3 and then I just upload that to my podcast as well so I'm just using instead of the video just for video I'm using it also for audio and then instead of the audio with the podcast also for video so I think that's good just you know you're not doubling up or you're not um doing more work <laughs> Definitely. And what about um, like headphones? I see you've got headphones on, Jeremy. Oh, you both have. Sorry, yours are green. <laughs> um, and um, do you need the headphones? Like, is it important? Well, we since we record in individual microphones, um, we in order to pick up the the incoming audio. If we played it over a loudspeaker, it would be playing into those microphones since they're so sensitive, and it would create a feedback loop. So it is pretty mandatory for how our setup is. Mm -hmm. And um, so anything else, any other things that you use or that you need or you think is important for people to have? We have, um, we can't really show, you can see kind of in the back of us right here, mm -hmm. um, behind our black flag, we have, uh, there's sound insulation panels. Um, so it, it helps stop any reverb in the room. Okay. Um, but but really, I, I gotta say, our setup now is really great, and it, but it's nowhere near what you need to have to, to start. Like, um, it's kind of things that we've added over time mm -hmm. to improve the quality even that much more. Mm. And with um with what where do you upload your podcast to? So I use Podomatic, and then I've set it up so it automatically goes to iTunes. What what do you do with the process? What once you've created it? We use Libsyn as our podcast host. How do you spell that? L I P L I B S Y N. S Y N. It stands for Liberated Syndication. Okay, cool. Is that an American based? I believe they're American based, yeah. yeah. But um, they're great because what they do is they don't uh, cap your bandwidth at all, so we can have as many downloads as we, we want, and then they give us a, a monthly upload limit. Okay. But um, they keep our back catalog for us, so every single month that restarts and our backlog catalog is now um, permanent and we don't have to pay for that anymore. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've been with them the whole time you've been doing the podcast? Yeah, yes. yeah we have. Yeah. Yeah. And have you heard anyone else that uses other you know, I, I know a lot of people use, use different ones, but um, some of the bigger ones that I know of, like some of the, just the bigger podcasts that are out there, um, most of them are actually with Liberated Syndication now. Um, they're, okay. they're pretty, pretty um, big as far as the, the the hosting deals. Mm -hmm. And what do you do once you've got um, your podcast online? How do you promote it? I give it to Jordan and say, deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you do I, then, Jordan? <laughs> usually what I do is um, I I put it I put a description on our podcast and that's also um, uploaded onto iTunes. Um, we're also syndicated through um, we have vegan feed, and then we have um, yeah, I love that Stitcher, Stitcher, yeah, Core what, Destruction what's, Radio. What's Stitcher? A Stitcher is a another podcast feed like iTunes. Okay. And then we just got picked up by Core of Destruction Radio um, Tuesdays. Tuesdays at ten a.m. That's think, Eastern time. Eastern time in the U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That and like then, New um, York time is that Eastern time? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I believe mm -hmm. so. And then, um, so what does that mean when you said you just got picked up by them? They'll they'll play your they re, yeah they replay the show that we we release on Sunday or Monday. Okay, and cool. they'll replay that on Tuesday or ten through their audience. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically, the ways that I promote are um, through social media mainly, um, and then I upload also onto our website. We have a streaming link, so you can listen to our website as well as iTunes, Stitcher, and the other ones we've named. And then, um, yeah, just, I try to, I try to add a photo of the person that we're interviewing most of the time, mm -hmm. and I'll upload that to, say, Instagram, and then I'll tag it, and then I have that, um, I've, I've set up programs that distribute it to other social media accounts, and then I'll go into those social media accounts and tweak them if I need to. Mm -hmm. um, 
And what are all much. your your links for your social media? Um, we have we have our we have Facebook. We do have Google Plus, but we don't update it. So that's that's something that we need to work. We on. can talk about um, that. <laughs> yeah, and then we have Twitter um, and Instagram mm-hmm. and Tumblr and Tumblr mm-hmm. are the ones that we use. And mainly. what do you find the best one to get out your podcast information, or you like to use all? I think, well, we have the most followers on Facebook um, with, or I should say likes, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on Tumblr, we, we get a lot of um, a lot of good positive feedback from Tumblr. Um, Twitter would be the next, and then I'd say Instagram is probably the last. Well, after Google+. Mm-hmm. Google+, Plus would be the last. Mm-hmm. But I, I will say that we get the most... Um, non-purposeful traffic like people stumbling across us on vegan feed mm-hmm. um, yeah that, that by far it, it creates a it generates a ton of traffic for us yeah me too actually with the vegan feed and um it always comes up on my google alerts to anything the vegan feed um has of mine on there which is really good and there seems to be a lot of vegan podcasts doesn't there yeah there definitely does so and a lot of it, and, and I know through like Podomatic where I host mine, um, there's a lot of health related ones as well. So um, that hopefully the message is getting out there. Definitely. I think it definitely is. Yeah. And um, so with, oh yeah, Google Plus, um, what, do you, what do you think about it? I just, um, I just wasn't getting a good, good return from mm-hmm the effort that it took to put into it. And its API is not very compatible with other social medias. I don't know if that's changed, but... um, You mean like if you post something on there and it'll link to another channel? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think... No, it still hasn't. Yeah, and so I want... I like like it easy, and so Mm. um, sometimes that it could take up to an hour of my day just doing, you know, social media stuff for one episode and so if if I have to take that additional time to post something elsewhere it kind of is frustrating but if we get a good response from it I definitely am yeah because I like um we're saying before on um my interview with you um that um google plus for me for viva la vegan dot net like it's Massive, I got almost 20,000 followers on there. And at the beginning, I just was like, oh, yeah, I'll just join and see what happens and didn't really put too much effort into it whatsoever. And maybe, you know, because I was one of the first vegan pages on there, there was like the Vegan Society in the UK and myself and like a handful of others, um, but now there's a lot more. So maybe that helped just being there um, when it sort of started, but I, I do think it's only going to get bigger. And as more people are leaving Facebook, um, it's only going to get bigger and bigger. And like, you know, if you think they own YouTube, um, Google ads, um, the map thing, what else did Google have? <clears throat> Gmail. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's going to happen sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. I can see it happening. Mm. It, do you see most of your um, viewers or your subscribers from Australia, or are they from all over? Um, forty about forty five percent of my subscribers are from the US, in particular, um, California, mm-hmm. and then pretty close to that is Australia, Melbourne. So they're my main sort of thing, and also I have a lot more male than female like most vegans are skewed to the female side but i have a lot more male just recently so yeah i don't know what's happening with that <laughs> i find that interesting though i'm not sure of the analytics of age or gender on, on ours yeah we've never really looked at that ours are more location based yeah. analytics for everything we have mm-hmm. yeah in google analytics is that what you use uh Libsyn's actually has its own analytics so. okay cool yeah um, yeah, I'm not sure specifically for podcasts. I was talking more like my website and that. But I find like um, I still do get a lot of traffic from Facebook, like Google Plus traffic to my website, not as much as Facebook. And Pinterest is pretty close for me too. 
Um, but just for the interaction and the amount of sharing and the comments on Google Plus is just like massive, which I find really cool. And we'll we'll gotta get our our new social media intern up and running and get him on that. Yeah. <laughs> It's hard. It's hard to let go of the reins sometimes, so to speak. Yeah, that's not a very vegan saying. No. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends keeps saying "around the traps" as well, and I'm like, "Stop saying that." <laughs> How? What's the um vegan version of that then? Uh, destroy the traps. No, the the reins one. Oh, pass the pass the stick. <laughs> Pass the tofurkey. <laughs> Pass the torch. That would be. Pass the torch. Yeah, that's good. Pass I like the torch. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, who are the favorite people that you've interviewed on your podcast over the years? That's hard. Um, I, I'm, I'm drawing names. Honestly, the names. Um, I really enjoy like the the lesser known. We don't. We try to. We try to get people who aren't really vegan celebrities sometimes on or anarchist celebrities and I like like some of the most interesting things that we've had are like Dave Gunn for example yeah and yeah. he's just telling us about his traveling stories where he's hitchhiked across America and that's, that's cool that's way interesting to me mm. uh, there's so many interesting people it, that's a hard question yeah, yeah it, it is a really hard question and it changes every week even yeah yeah yeah, it would. And so who have you got um, coming up that you're going to interview? Do you normally have, like, you know, a few months you've got a list of people or you're just like, oh, no, I need someone for tomorrow. Who can speak? There's definitely been those moments <laughs> yeah. where it's, oh, no, we need someone. Um, but right now we have a pretty good lineup. Um, so we have somebody who's doing a project with uh, Vegan Indiegogo. Um, it's all about it's, it's a, a vegan parenting website that they're starting. What's that um, one called? Them coming up. What was that? What's it called? That website? Um, I you, 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 I'd have to look it up. I'm sorry. No. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> I'd have to look at my calendar. <laughs> um, and then we might be interviewing. I don't know. We have we have some people in the talks. They aren't confirmed yet. So. Mm-hmm. Cool. And um, so, how do you get people to interview? My wife actually does all of our um, social. social media. Or booking, yeah. Is that Mari? Yes. Yes. Yeah, cool. So I just to to organise this into this podcast with us, I just emailed you and just said I'd love to interview you and we could do a podcast swap. And do you get many people that do that? Um, we've had it a couple times. We've had now. a couple, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, or Ian McDonald was one that we've from done Vegan recently. Option. Vegan Option in the UK. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he was uh, he's had a Kickstarter for a new podcast that he's working on. Mm-hmm. Um, what else have we had that we've done that with? Um, my mind is drawing so I'm so <laughs> bad with names. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's happened a few times, and uh, we enjoyed it every time. Mm-hmm. Sure. Good. And you both live in Salt Lake City in Utah yes. yeah. in the mm-hmm. States. Can you tell me what the vegan scene's like over there? You know, it, it, it it's it's hard to say like what's it like because it, it's just like home. Mm. But um, it, it what it is, it, it's changed so much in the last you know ten years, um, where it especially in Utah, we went from having you know ten years ago one vegan restaurant and just a couple of vegan friendly restaurants to having numerous vegan restaurants, vegan bakeries, and a tremendous amount of vegan options and vegan friendly places. Um, it, it it's been like night and day, so mm. it, it's it's fantastic, yeah. And have you noticed it, like, the past five years or ten years? Or, like, have you noticed I'm really like, five years ago it was, like, a pinnacle change here. Like, mm. it, like you could go to a place and say, I'm vegan, and they'd actually know what you mean instead of having to explain it. So yep. there's still times that you do have to, but I'd say it's very – That's very far the place. exception. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And um, have you both always lived in Utah? I've traveled around and – you know, a couple months here or there and other places, but, but mm-hmm. mostly here, yeah. Yeah, Utah's always been my home, but I mm-hmm. have lived elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And what are the other places you'd like to go in the States? Like, like, like to visit? Or like yeah, to, to visit, to live, to eat vegan food, whatever. <laughs> um, I love New York. 
Yeah. Uh, I've always loved New York. I love traveling to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, but ever since my daughter, we've kind of, you know, haven't done that as much as we used to. Mm -hmm. What about Seattle, Asia? Portland are definitely good vegan choices. Yeah. Um, but I, I, New York's great. I Denver, think, too. Yeah, Denver's great, too. I kind of prefer mm. traveling to, like, um, smaller unknown places and kind of just figure out veganism on the way. Mm. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm more um, West Coast than East Coast um, in, this, in the States. I'm, yeah, I, like, New York's great to visit, but I'm, I just don't get why everyone is just like, I love New York all the time. It's I like I like to, you know, see the stars and see the trees and hear the birds and it's very with people like, you know, it, it's similar to some of the large like Asian sort of cities as well. You, there's no eye contact. Everyone's just quickly passing you whereas I'm like, "Oh, hi. Hi." You know? <laughs> Maybe that's just because that's what I get all the time here. Yeah. It, it's just a bit different. So <laughs> yeah. really like it. You yeah. like it, yeah. And you said you have a daughter, Jeremy. How old is she? I do. She's seven. She's and almost eight. Is she vegan? She, yeah, of course. Yeah, and your family is vegan? Mm -hmm. And so how hard is that for other people to understand? You know, we were really worried about her when she started school and preschool. Um uh, we're really lucky. She doesn't. She doesn't go to a, a public school here. Mm -hmm. um, she goes to as a charter school, and they're fantastic. Um, there's another uh, vegan kid in her class, and two other vegetarian kids in her class. Oh wow! So they understand it very well. Um, she, whatever they mm -hmm. they donate books all the time. So like when it's their mm -hmm. birthday, they get to pick out a book and donate it to their class. Oh cool! And like every year, she's always picked out uh, "Vegan is Love" um, mm -hmm. to donate to her class by Ruby so, Roth. Yeah, good book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So really, um, all of our fears were just fears, and none of it has come to fruition. Like, it's always, it's been honestly fantastic. Yeah. Do you have any children, Jordan? I don't. No plans? No plans. <laughs> <laughs> My sister just had a baby recently, so I've been doing auntie duties, and um, baby Blake, he got um, Ruby's um, V is for Vegan book. And she signed it for me, and um, but he doesn't understand it yet. He just wants to eat it because he's only, he's just about five months old. So, and actually, so so many of my friends are having babies at the moment. We've got, I think four four of my vegan friends. So we had one, Elisa before I went. Um, my my well vegetarian baby for my sister, and um, a friend Dan just had a girl summer and then another friend Chris just had her baby so we've had like a heap of babies all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> it happens that's the best way to make them make sure <laughs> that they're vegan though yeah but can you really ever make sure someone's vegan with enough force <laughs> <laughs> Because this is the thing, like, a friend of mine, um, Carol Glasser, I don't know if you know her, but she did this really cool um, speech at the um, Critical Animal Studies conference last year I was part of, and um, it was about, uh, what did she call it, liberation, not procreation, and um, it was really cool, and it's on her, it's on her vagina website too, um, and she was giving a debate with this other guy about whether... Um, vegans should be bringing kids into the world or not, or another life. And she was saying, you know, just because you raise someone vegan doesn't mean they will necessarily be vegan, which is true, isn't it? It is true. Mm. I, kind of, I kind of look at it in a weird way like religion. You you see more people stay in a religion if they're born into it than if they're converted into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, okay. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> And she was talking about, um, you know, if you actually adopt someone rather than give birth to someone, that you can actually influence them, a, I don't know, a lot more maybe because they were not vegan and then they now are vegan. I, I, I think I think those are they're all valid points. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's whatever best for each individual family. Yeah, definitely. I just loved um I just loved it because it was just so um outside the square of what certain people had heard before and she gave a good debate against this other guy. <laughs> 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 so, um what are your plans for the rest of your weekend? Um my family is actually having a huge St. Patrick's Day party. Okay. So, we're going to head over there and have vegan hot dogs. Mhm. Mm 
That'll be good. I know it's a little earlier than St. Patrick's Day, but it's the only time we can get together. Yeah, when is St. Patrick's Day? 13th? I think it's... Yeah, I think it's... 17th? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really pay attention. For the festival that I put on, we always had it around St. Patrick's Day, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. This would probably be the weekend if I was having my festival. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Jordan? Any plans? Um... Nothing, nothing today. Um, we're going to be doing another podcast tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And um, probably helping my, my father with some sheetrocking in his house. Oh, what, yeah, what's sheetrocking? Uh, walls, building walls. Building walls, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that like a brand? Uh, no, it's, it's what they call the gypsum board. Yeah, okay. So we could, yeah. we would use the brand names like we've got Jip Rock, so Jip okay. Rocking oh, okay. or something. Yeah. yeah. Cool, that'll be fun. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, I've got um one of my um biggest fans actually, Jim, he's coming over from Tasmania, so I'm seeing him this week. So we're going out to lunch and doing some videos and some interviews this afternoon, so that'll be good. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Just things weird that you're like, oh, he's coming from Tasmania. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've never been to Tasmania, actually, but um, it's meant to be gorgeous. I have a a friend from Tasmania. She's now living in the States. Um, Okay. She she married Jeffrey Lurz. Lilia. She worked with the Sea Shepherds down there, too. Oh, yeah. Cool. Good. Yeah, a lot of people come over here for Sea Shepherd. A heap of my friends have come over for Sea Shepherd missions, so... It's good getting a lot of stuff done here. Okay, well, Jordan, Jeremy from Which Side Podcast, which you can find at whichsidepodcast.com. Thank you very much for taking the time out to speak with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your podcast, and um, I will speak to you next time. And for everyone else, check out vivalavegan.net for more information. Thank you.